Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking a little bit about some of that upcoming severe weather. We're also going to talk about some of that snowfall coming through the Rockies, and once again, that Arctic blast slash cooldown that is coming for the eastern and central United States. I also finally see a full end in sight to that, and actually a warmer pattern coming up eventually too, so stay tuned to find out when that is. <music> Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I have a little bit of an off-topic one. So, do you think we're going to get to a very early start to the hurricane season like we have in years past? I'm talking about uh, May, June, July, many uh, storms and all sorts of stuff going on. Or do you think that we're going to get to more of a traditional start, not really getting active until July, uh, and then picking up from that point? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, though. And first things first, we're taking a look at the categorical outlook here. For the day one, which is today, obviously, Saturday, May 8th, May is just already flying by. Uh, we're already almost to the halfway mark. Uh, we have three general thunderstorm areas, one in the middle there, and then one there for Florida, and then one for the northeast and the mid-Atlantic. So this is our three separate ones. Obviously, the one in the middle is much, much larger, and it does also have a marginal risk within it. So that's going to be for Texas, Oklahoma, Colorado, Kansas, Nebraska, Missouri. Then we even have a slight risk for Kansas and Missouri. Let's get into those individual outlooks. First things first, looking at that wind outlook, we have a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there within the green shaded regions. And then we have a 15% chance there for Kansas and Missouri there. Uh, so that's going to be a little bit of a more larger damaging wind threat. I do expect that upgrades throughout the day today are possible also tomorrow, uh, more so tomorrow than today, uh, to an enhanced risk. Today is kind of a... I would say under 50% chance that we see an enhanced risk. Tomorrow, I would say it's 50-50 or perhaps a little bit more for that upgrade to an enhanced risk. Regardless, we want to pay attention and take it seriously, obviously. We have a 5% chance of hail within 25 miles of a given location there in the green, and then a 15% chance there in the yellow, again, for Kansas and Missouri. We even have a hatched region there for central Kansas, and that's going to be where 2-inch diameter hail or more is possible. Unfortunately, we also have tornadoes possible throughout the day today. We have a 2% chance of tornadoes there within the green shaded regions within 25 miles of a given location again. We also have a 5% chance there for central Kansas, which obviously this is uh, pretty high considering it's tornadoes we're talking about and not damaging wind or hail. So we're going to be watching very, very closely. Some of these smaller tornado events, unfortunately, have been overperforming a lot recently. So we're going to be watching closely and paying close attention to this. Uh, and I, I highly recommend you do so as well. Uh, we've had these slight risk days end up having 20 or 25 or 30 tornadoes uh, in one day just from a slight risk. Uh, so we've seen things overperform a little bit recently. So we're going to be watching for that very closely. All right, now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to get into the modeled guidance for day one. Temperature, cape, all sorts of stuff going on, simulated radar. Then we're going to take a look at day two. We're going to take a look at that snowstorm and then we're even going to take a look at that cool down and when I expect it to end and when I even expect a huge warm up to return to the eastern United States coming up in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look here at our temperatures that are expected according to the models. Uh, we have widespread 80s uh, and even some uh, upper mid 80s there for central Kansas uh, and upper 70s there for the Missouri side of things. This will be sufficient as far as temperatures are concerned. Uh, and now that we're looking at our cape, you can see we're going to have 1,000 uh, in the greens, 2,000 in the yellows, and even 2,500 to 3,000 there in the more orange areas there for central Oklahoma and to south central Kansas. So this is what we consider to be thunderstorm fuel, if you will. The storms eat this up. So when we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 amounts, that's just more and more fuel that is just sitting there waiting for thunderstorms to develop. Uh, and they're going to be able to de develop further and develop longer because of these higher amounts of cape. If we only had 1,000, they wouldn't be able to last as long. They would eventually eat up all that cape, and then they would start to dissipate a lot sooner. That's why I do expect this to actually be a little bit of an overnight threat. These storms are going to be able to last quite long because of these elevated amounts of cape there. So let's just talk about, first off, this is going to be our simulated radar, and this is going to be about 7 p.m. today, again, Saturday, May 8th. And as you can see, we have those thunderstorms firing up by 7 p.m. today. 
uh, for portions of Kansas especially. Then eventually we get kind of a wind-driven type uh, storm mode here. This is what we would call a, a little bit of a linear storm mode there, and that's where we see a line, obviously, of thunderstorms, and that is more of a wind-driven type severe weather event. By 4 a.m., it's the same exact thing, except now it's moving in through portions of southeastern Kansas and most of Missouri by this point as well. Still that linear storm mode, which again uh, leads to more of that wind-driven severe weather to be likely. All right, now, as we take a look at day two, you can see we have two areas of general thunderstorm risks that are very large, one there for the um, areas just to the east of the Rockies. We even have a marginal risk on the southern extent of that for New Mexico, Texas, and Oklahoma, as well as Colorado. We have one there for Florida, uh, which is just the general thunderstorm risk. Still want to pay attention. Severe weather does happen in those occasionally. We also see one down there for the Gulf states, especially, and then areas up the Mississippi River from there as well. Uh, and that's one that we're the most concerned about. I do think an enhanced risk upgrade is possible at some point. Uh, I wouldn't say likely, probably a 50-50 shot, but it could happen. Uh, we have that general thunderstorm risk, very widespread. Then we also have a large marginal risk from Texas, and you take that all the way northward through uh, Kentucky. And then we see slight risk there for Texas, Louisiana, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, a little bit of Missouri there, a little tiny bit of Illinois, and then a bit of Kentucky as well there uh, for that slight risk region. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at those individual risks. We're also going to take a look at the total snowfall and then we're going to take a tiny bit of a look at that again that cool down that's going to be eventually coming to an end. We're going to talk about that in just a moment. All right now here we are taking a look here at the individual outlooks and this is our day two wind outlook first off. We have a two Sorry, a 5% chance of damaging wind within 25 miles of a given location there within the two green regions. We have a 15% chance there for Texas, Louisiana, uh, Arkansas, Mississippi, Tennessee, Kentucky, and Missouri. As we look at that hail outlook, you can see it's just a tiny bit smaller, but generally the same thing. 5% chance within the green, and then a 15% chance there within the yellow, which is almost identical there uh, to that wind risk. Now, as we take a look at the day two tornado outlook, it's a lot larger. And I do think if we do get an upgrade, it would likely be a 10% chance here uh, for tornadoes somewhere within the brown. That's a very large 5% region. Would not be surprised to see that 10% chance upgrade, unfortunately. We have a 2% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location there within the green. We have a 5% chance of tornadoes within 25 miles of a given location there within the brown. And I think we could, again, 50-50 shot, could have a 10% chance upgrade there within 25 miles of a given location. All right, now to talk a little bit briefly about that upcoming snowfall event, uh, we have two to six inches of snow expected within the blue shades under that, so a dusting, if anything, there within the grays. And then the purples, we have a six to 10 inch uh, region there. And then a uh, 10 to 20 inch possible region there uh, within a lot of the pink areas, which is mostly just mountaintops. But for the middle of May, this is a pretty uh, significant snow event. Uh, usually that's more reserved for March and April. All right, now to talk a little bit about that cool down, this is what we're dealing with right now. We're dealing with far below normal temperatures for the eastern United States. I've been talking about this for weeks, and I was saying it was coming, and it eventually did. Uh, it's 48 degrees outside here in Virginia, which is significantly far below normal temperatures. Uh, if it was any colder than this, we'd be kind of worried about the plants. If it was in the 30s, obviously. Uh, we have those greens widespread indicating 10 to 15 degrees below normal now, by the time we're taking a look at about Monday morning, we are going to see a bit of a warm-up there for the southeast and a lot of the east coast there with some very cold temperatures right behind it that will race in. And by the time we're taking a look at Wednesday the 12th, you can see some far below normal temperatures there for the Gulf states, the southeast, the east coast, widespread. All right, but by the time we're reaching about 2 a.m. on Wednesday here, you can see the warmer temperatures finally arrive. So I think the second half of May is going to be dominated by these warmer-than-normal conditions uh, I generally think that's a, a good likelihood there for the central and eastern United States. A big turnaround from what we've been dealing with in the earlier half of this month. And as you can see, by the time we're reaching about 7 p.m. on Saturday, May 22nd, that warm-up is even more potent, and it's still around for the eastern half of the country. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a 4 out of 6. Obviously, we've talked about some longer-range things today. Uh, some lower confidence things. We've made a little bit of some bold predictions like the enhanced risk upgrade for tomorrow. That's our reason for being at a 4 out of 6 uh, instead of a 5 or a 6 out of 6. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, what do you think is the most highest severe weather risk we will get uh, this week with this severe weather that is upcoming? And Jonathan Schlack said, I'm thinking at most an enhanced risk, uh, and I definitely agree there. 
Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Jonathan Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Larry LaPan, and Donna Carnes. I would also like to thank our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Al Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalesa, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Fuego, Garys, John Qualisi, and Dwight Phelan. Sorry, I tripped up a little bit there. I've been saying the same names for months and months and months, and I just updated this, so it's a little bit harder for me to uh, get used to when you've said the same thing every morning for like <laughs> three months. It's a little bit difficult to break that habit. Anyway, for today's uh, channel members highlight of the day, I would like to thank our two weather top dogs, Hair Farms One and Cat Bite, for supporting the channel. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to absolutely destroy the like button. Be sure to leave a comment down below to help the YouTube algorithm out. I'll try to respond to those as much as possible. Be sure to subscribe if you like weather-related content, and also be sure to have a great day today as well. See you guys in the next video.